Women's Day. However, you may be celebrate, celebrating this day if you're doing something, or if you're watching a service or whatever. Uh, welcome to the first day of Lent. And I have kept you in suspense as to uh, how we are going to be observing uh, this period. Or, I mean, just in general about where we were going after Revelations. And I would love for that to be um, increasing your anticipation by suspense. And alas, it was lack of, of foreplanning. But I've decided that as we are here and as we have uh, begun today, uh, it would be nice to spend the time of Lent on something slightly different. So here's the plan. We are going to read a chapter of all the Old Testament books throughout Lent. So one each day. We're starting in Genesis, obviously. And really, it's a whistle-stop tour. You can't you can't really ascertain everything that's going on. Definitely loads of stories are missed there. But really, just to get a sense of the breadth of scripture. And I hope you enjoy it and I hope it enthuses you. And at least uh, for this, every single day will be will be different. And maybe uh, you will all find uh, something within this that you can really get your teeth into. So without further ado, let's hear scripture. Genesis, chapter 1, the New International Version. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And it was so. God called the vault sky. And there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry land, ground land and the gathered watered, waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years and let them be a light in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it. According to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, 
the livestock according to their kinds and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that we so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it. I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. We all know this scripture. Even uh, most of the people in our culture, secular as they may be, will know the story of creation, will know, you know, God rested, you know, he saw that it was good. Um, possibly won't be able to tell you what happened on each day, but but know that, that there's seven days and, you know, roughly what the story is. I know that as um, a child, an awful lot of my exploration of this story uh, really centred around that, you know, is it literally true? Is that literally what happened? And that seemed to be the most important aspect to the story. And yet what we see within it that the most important thing is that it's all God's doing, isn't it? It's all God's action. God didn't need to do anything. There was, there was no reason, but, you know, except that God wanted to do it. And the entirety of creation, God looks at and says that's really good I'm really pleased with that and in many ways we can have a view of the created order especially possibly humans uh, with Genesis and, and the sort of the look of the fall and, and focusing on the fall that um, there's inherently some sort of evil or something wrong or something not as it ought to be. And yet in this creation account, what we have continually is God looking at what was made and saying, this is good. This is good. I'm happy with this. Again, we might have heard many um, problems uh, approaching Genesis and that idea of subjugation of creation and ruling over it, dominion, all those things. Um, and that is something worthwhile to be unpacked. But for me, you can't read this without marvelling at creation. I know in a service last year, we did it and set it alongside um, various pictures of, of images of creation. And it just impresses upon you the majesty that's in creation. The majesty of what God has made. And so... Hopefully, during this period, as we look through different bits of the Bible, we look at how God continues to reach out, continues to love creation and want to be in relationship, to seek after us. Um, but maybe you've got a different picture of what this entire journey is going to look like. What for you are the major themes of the Bible? What do you anticipate as we step into the Old Testament? Let's pray. Lord God, as we enter this period of Lent, we recognise that it is often a time where we do without, where we give up things or, 
or we focus on spiritual disciplines in order to, to come closer to you. Perhaps this year we have uh, something in mind or perhaps with all that's going on in the world, we just don't feel like we can take much more deprivation. Whatever we may feel, wherever we are, Lord God, I pray that during Lent we might hear from you. That we might draw near to you. I pray for everyone hearing this and the plenty of people who don't, that they would experience something during this period. As we uh, await a lifting of lockdown, may we get hope, hope from the gospel. The gospel that began in creation and continues to this day, that there is hope through God and through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, in whose name we offer these prayers. Amen.